Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M 3D printer to print a 3D model. And today, we'll, the 3D model we'll be printing is called a Roctopus. And of course, you're going to need a 3D printer. Uh, you're also going to need some sort of a filament. Uh, in this case, you'll be using a PETG filament. And the ones I have used so far are from two manufacturers, the first being Acidity and the second one being LA Goo. And both of them seem to be doing a very good job. And I'll uh, put a link in the description below in case you're interested. You're also going to need uh, a wet towelette and a dry towelette. And you're going to need a adhesive, this uh, 3D printing adhesive. And it comes with the printer itself. And you can see on it, it says it's, uh, it works with a POA, ABS, ASA, and PETG prints. So we'll be doing PETG, so it should be good. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is, of course, uh, you're gonna load your filament, which I can show you in a separate video how to do that, but right now it's already loaded. And we're gonna be using the white filament. And uh, the next thing is uh, you wanna clean your printing surface. We're gonna use the wet towelette. So I'm gonna clean the adhesive that was applied from the last one. So I'm gonna clean that out. And now I want to dry it, so I'll use the dry towelette to do that. Once it's dry, then I'm going to apply the printing adhesive. In this case, take the cap off and you can see a very nice soft applicator here for your printer bed, so it doesn't damage it or scratch it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shake a little bit to get it wet, this cloth. I'm going to apply it in a first horizontal fashion. And I'm going to go vertically. And that should be sufficient. And what this uh, 3D adhesive, printing adhesive does is it makes sure that as you're printing, your uh, model does not shift, right? It makes it ad adhere to the surface. You don't want it to shift because if it does that, it can lead to distortions, right? So we want to keep it nice and the resolution good. So this is what the 3D adhesive does. All right, so now that we have our printer set up, it's on, everything's ready to go. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to go to the computer. We're going to download the st.sto file or the CAD drawing from a website I'll show you. It's called Thingiverse. And once we have the .sto file, then we're going to use a software called FleshPrint to slice the file and upload it to the printer. So I'll show you how to do that now. Ready to print. All right, so now that we have our printer all set up and ready to print, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the STL file. And to do that, I use website called Thingiverse. All right, so this is a great website which has a lot of 3D models already pre-made. They're not for sale. You can use them to print at home, but uh, yeah, please don't, don't sell them. Um, so this, what you do here is you would download the, the file you want to. In this case, we want to do the Roctopus. So I'm going to search for that. Okay, so again, now that we have uh, a bunch of uh, Roctopus files, the one I'm going to be downloading is this one. It seems to have 1,000 loves. It's uh, a lot of downloads, so I'm going to go to that one. And then here, it's going to take you to this website where it's going to show you an uh, image of the actual uh, CAD drawing. And then here, it's going to give you under things de thing details. You can look at the summary, uh, you know, what kind of settings the person used to print this, and so on. Uh, but where we want to go is we want to go to files. So let's go here. And under files, you see all the files associated with this print. In this case, it's only one file, but sometimes you might have more than one. So we are going to download this uh, .stl file. So you're looking for that type of file. Click download. And now that it's downloaded, uh, we're going to open it. There we go. And once it opens up, again, it opens up in a software called Flash Print. And flash print needs to be downloaded separately and, and set up for your specific printer. And I can show you how to do that uh, in another video. And so we're going to click repair model in this case. And then it says the model has been repaired. We'll click OK. And now we're ready to go to the next step, which is to slice the model. Or we could also move this model. So the, this is your platform on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. I could take this model and shift it somewhere else if I don't want it to be centered like this. I could just, 
uh, move it by clicking on this and then just moving it around anywhere I want to have it. In this case, we'll put it centered because it's uh, usually the best way to do it. But if you had most other things you want to print at the same time, you could add them somewhere else. So you could move it out of the way and add a few other things. And you can print them at the same time. All right. So let's put this at the uh, origin, close to the origin. Uh, the next thing we want to do is after we position it where we want to position it, let's say you want to add another file actually. You come here and you click File and Load File. And you could maybe download, uh, add uh, this, uh, I don't know, some sort of a, a rook. Let's see, you want to print a rook, you can put it anywhere as well. So now both of them can be printed at the same time. But all we want is one. So, and on the bottom, actually, if you flip it over, and the way I'm doing it is I'm right clicking on the screen and then moving the mouse. And I can see on the bottom here, will actually be adhered to your platform. And you want to make sure you have good adhesion. You don't want to have just a little bit of blue because uh, then your model will be flying up in the air and it's not good. So you want to make sure it's on the base. All right, so that's another thing. So now that we've checked the model, we've centered it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click Start Slicing. Okay, and in here, once you click that, you select the nozzle you'll be using. In this case, we're using 0.4 millimeter, but you can have different nozzle sizes as well. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the material type. In this, play, in this case, we're using a PETG material. So we'll click on that. You can have other selections here, but I'm going to click PETG. And then the uh, filament size is 1.75 millimeters. And then this is the standard profile that typically loads for this type of a material. The layer height is about 0.2 millimeters, so 200 microns. The fill density is 15%. That means that we're not going to have 100% uh, of polymer there. There's going to be holes. Only 50% will be polymer, 85% will be essentially air inside your model. So that will save material. And then we have print speed at 300 millimeters per second. With PETG, you can go up to 600 millimeters per second. But because this is such a fine resolution, we want to slow it down a little bit. We're going to go at 300 millimeters per second. We want it to look nice and clean. And then there's going to be two shell counts. If you go to export mode, you can modify some of these settings, but I'm not going to go into this now. Now we can do in a separate video, we can look at the, uh, the uh, export settings. All right, so I'm going to go to basic mode again. And then after you, you make sure everything looks good, you click slice. Fix your model and it slices it into different layers. Slice preview. So I'm going to go up here, slice preview. See, so you got to zoom in to see what happened. In essence, the slicing, what it does is it slices your model into the layers that it's going to print. So each layer that you see here will be an individual layer uh, that your printer would print one at a time. So we'll do this layer, then this layer, then that layer, and so on. So that's what this software does. It slices the CAD drawing into layers so your printer knows where to go and how to print it. If I were to go in here, see there's air inside the different model parts uh, yep and then different colors mean different things you can see what uh, legend says here all right so now that we have our model sliced we can take a look at several things on the right here you will see that this will take about 29.14 grams of PETG to print and it's going to take about one hour and 18 minutes to print so we want to make sure we have enough uh, raw material to print it and we have enough time you know, before going to bed, let's say that we to print this uh, this model. All right. So once you slice the model, you're ready to print. And to do that, you click on this uh, icon here to send it to the printer. All right. So let's click that. What it does is it automatically detects my printer. So I'm going to click on that arrow. And then now it's going to say uh, the file name is the Rocktopus V2. Yes, that's the one. I'm going to say OK. And now what it does is it sends the file to the printer and it's going to start the printing process. All right, so now that we've transferred the file to the printer, you can see the Rocktopus uh, file image looks is uh, on the printer here and the printer is preheating. What that means is that the filament bed as well as the nozzle in the back will need to heat up. The first thing that happens is the bed heats up to 80 degrees and that's this right here, right now we're at 73, 74. 
and it's increasing slowly until it reaches 80. And once the filament bed reaches 80 degrees C, the nozzle is going to start warming up to uh, 250 degrees. There we go. So within 2 degrees C, now the bed is within 2 degrees C of 80. So the uh, nozzle is starting to heat up to 250 degrees C. There we go. So we're now at 250. And the print will initiate. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Alright, so I'm gonna let it print for a while and then we're gonna come back in a few minutes. Like I said, it's gonna take about an hour and 18 minutes. And on the screen right now it says there's one hour and 15 minutes left. Alright, so about 5% complete. So we're at 97% complete and uh, it's about to finish. I just want to show you how it looks as it's working. So as you can see over here, uh, I see the filament in the back. And as it's uh, printing, it's pulling up filament. You can see it rotating the roll. So now we let the platform cool to uh, less than 60 degrees Celsius because 16 and above becomes uncomfortable to the touch. And uh, we're gonna be detaching it. And you gotta be careful. I'm gonna so try to pull one at a time here. But again, this is a sensitive chain, so a fragile chain. We don't want to break it. Chains are released. Now I'm gonna work on the head. There we go. And we got the uh, octopus is good to go. So looks, like I said, very good. Uh, great uh, resolution. It's uh, it is fantastic. All right, guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit the like and subscribe button. And until next time.